Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Earlier this year, I designed and built this bonefish lure. I'll let you get a good look at it. You can see uh, I've got this gold bone structure and then in the background what I was trying to do was a simulated stone kind of look. Uh, all hand painted, almost like it was carved out of the stone. Maybe like a fossil or something. And then on the other side, you've got your more traditional uh, foiled lure look. And uh, I really wanted to do something different. I wanted to challenge myself. And it wasn't even halfway through the carving process that I really started regretting not recording it uh, for a video. So since I didn't do it then, I'm going to do it now. But it's not going to be exactly like this lure. I like the duality of this lure, the, the two sides. So I'm probably going to keep that theme going. But what I really want to do is I want to challenge myself with carving and even painting and see if I can't take this concept to another level. Anyway, I'm really excited about this lure and I'm ready to get started. Let's do it. Occasionally, I do myself a favor that pays off much later on. In this case, I made several of these 7 inch popper blanks earlier this year. So I don't have to go and dig out the lathe and start from scratch today, which is nice because it's over 100 degrees right now. If you want to see this process in more detail, check out my video, Making a Wooden Saltwater Popper. I'll put a link in the description if you are interested. Now that summer is in full swing, I find myself taking advantage of the cool morning air and enjoy working outside under the oak tree. Hey Zoe, how are you doing? Y'all haven't met Zoe yet, but she's a very, very good dog. She sleeps most of the day, but she does love to be petted a lot. If you pet her once, you're going to wind up petting her all day. Yep.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drill in the eye. And uh, for that, I'm going to use a 5 8 inch Forstner bit. Excellent. See? I've got it aligned with this, uh, this other side pretty well, I think. You can see from the top. Well, that'll work. So I bought a new tool that I wanted to share with you and um, I got this because I'm always on the lookout for new techniques and new ways of uh, getting more detail in my lures. Lately I've been interested in fish carving. It's a little bit like taxidermy except the, the big difference is these fish are carved completely out of wood and all the detail is carved onto the wood before it's painted uh, instead of a fiberglass model. There's a few competitions out there where people compete to carve and paint the most realistic replica of a fish. Anyway, several of those guys use a wood burner to add an extra layer of detail to their wood carvings. After researching several wood burners, I picked this one because it has a wide selection of tips that you can change out, interchangeable tips, and uh, you can even make your own custom tip if you wanted to. This is the Razor Tip SK. I think it's their single burner model. They have a. They also have a, a two burner model if you wanted to switch between two pins frequently. It came with a cord, power cord, for the uh, pin. It also came with uh, this pin. This is the BPH pin, which is their interchangeable one. They also have a fixed tip I guess if you have a tip that you really are going to use a lot, it's a little bit more durable. And then I bought some extra tips uh, of various shapes um, to go with it. There's a ball tip. There's a lot of these kind of blade type tips. A little round, round tip. So. They have, they have a ton of different tips that you can use on that, but all you gotta do to change them out is take a, a small screwdriver and loosen these two screws on the sides and that slips right out and you can put a new one in. So it's pretty easy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of trace down in the cracks and crevices where I've uh, already carved and it'll make it smoother. Okay, then um, another thing I'm going to do is there's some really shallow grooves here that, um, that are details on the gill plate. And I'm going to burn those in rather than try and carve them. I've got a lot of practicing to do with this wood burner to get the most out of it. But I can definitely see the potential of this new tool. And that's a heck of a lot faster than trying to carve it. Now I'm not going to do any wood burning on this side because my intention is to leave this natural wood. I'm just going to kind of clear coat over it uh, after I seal it and all that stuff so that you can see the wood grain. I do think I want to add a little bit of darkness in the background there to make the bones kind of pop out and make them really stand out. So to do that, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some wood stain that I've got here in the shop and I'm just gonna carefully brush it uh, into those areas, uh, being really careful. And I think that ought to give it a little bit more dimension. I want to use a wood stain though because I don't want to hide the grain of the wood. I want I want the, the beauty of the wood to come through.
that'll get a little bit more depth and um, once I get the uh, polyurethane over it and some clear coats over it I think it's really gonna look nice right so we need uh, three twist wires one for the tail one for the mouth and then one on the belly I'm gonna cut about a uh, eight inch pieces I'll get all three pieces to looking like that. This is hardened steel and it won't bend as easily. Okay, once I've got that chucked up in my drill bit. I'm going to go ahead and crimp it down like so. It's got a little bit of a bow in it so what I'll do uh, especially with this heavier wire sometimes you can just fix it with your hands but uh, if it's a heavier gauge like this then what you can do is you can use the vise to Kind of hold it and then you can get it straight and that'll help you out later on when you're trying to uh, install these into a hole okay so the front and back line ties i'm going to leave as long as i can but the belly tie i need to leave a little bit shorter so i'm going to i'm going to make it an inch and a quarter uh worth of embedment That leaves me an extra quarter of an inch so I don't go through. We're going to mark our drill spots. Dead center. Dead center. Between the fins. Kind of in the middle there. And on that one, what I'm trying to do is just keep it far enough away from the tail that the hooks don't uh, get tangled with one another. I'm using a 1 8 inch drill bit, which is just slightly, slightly bigger than this twist wire right here. And that'll allow good coverage of epoxy and all that good stuff. Other thing you might want to check when you're doing this, yeah, is kind of eyeball the depth. I'm going to have to set this a little bit further back because there's a concave, right, for the popper. So it's going to look like that kind of on the inside. And I've got my hole right here so you can see they're not going to hit each other. They're going to come close, but they're not going to hit each other. That's very important. Okay, so now this next hole is going to be pretty critical that I don't over drill. So I'm going to measure again. That is 1.4, let's, let's just say 1.4 inches. So if I go an inch and a quarter, I ought to be just fine as far as depth goes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of tape 
And I'm going to put that at an inch and a quarter. And I'm actually going to probably hold it just a hair back from that because I can always fine tune that and go a little bit deeper, but it's hard to shallow up a hole. So I got that mark on my tape and that way I know that once I get to there, I need to stop. Otherwise I'll drill through the other side and then I'll have to patch it and I don't want to have to do that. So I'll start slow. There we go. I'm also going to keep my hand away from that end just in case. Did not go through. There's a first time for everything in there. Yeah. There we go. That's going to be about right. Now, realistically speaking here, I don't think this is going to be a lure that's going to be fished with. Um, I think it'll be strong enough to. I don't know that I'd catch a 400 pound tuna on it or anything like that, but realistically this one's probably going to be more of a decorative lure. But I think with the twist ties, it would still be pretty strong. But if I was really making a, a lure to, to fish big fish with, um, I'd do a through wire but this is not what I would consider a utility lure. The other consideration on this lure is weight. And on a lot of my lures, I do put lead inside as you've seen, but for these poppers, one, they're top water, so they don't need to sink obviously, but also with these size lures, uh, I'm putting a big Mondo hook on there this is a, a 5 aught uh, triple strong hook, and then the rings that I'm putting on there are these Owner uh, number 9, uh, 320 to 540 pound split rings, and so they weigh quite a bit. By the time you hang that on the bottom and on the back, it sits in the water pretty nicely as is, and if you wanted to adjust that at all, you could... Um, you could get weighted hooks or, um, you know, do a, a second split ring on there. Um, I've seen people do second split rings on some types of fish so that it has enough twist to it that they can't wrench the lure out. These bigger lures are kind of famous for uh, the fish being able to use the, the mass of the lure to wrench free. And so uh, a lot of times you'll see double rings on these. Anyway. All that to say, I don't think this needs any lead in it. So we're ready to proceed to the next step. For embedding uh, hardware, I like to use this 30 minute slow cure epoxy. It's pretty simple, equal parts. Just put a little bead. Mix well. What you want to do is make sure that there's plenty of epoxy on it so that there's no holes or gaps because that's where you're going to get your weakness. But as long as there's plenty of epoxy down in that hole, it'll be plenty strong. Right now this is so liquid it uh, it's not very firm so I'm going to give it about five minutes and then I'm going to come set these straight and get them all aligned just like I want and clean off the excess. I'm going to put on some of this uh, Minwax polyurethane to seal it. I'm going to brush it on because obviously I don't have enough uh, depth here to do a dip.
All right, so now we're gonna let this hang for three to four hours while it dries and then we'll put a second coat on it. We've let this sit overnight, so let's take a look at it. See what we got. I did put a second coat on it. I think that gloss really adds something to it. Cool, okay, well, I guess we can uh, move on to this other side and uh, get some foil on it. All right, so I wanna orient this up and down with the pattern of my mesh so that the uh, scales will be oriented correctly. And then I kind of penciled in here, I was kind of guesstimating a little bit of where the gills are gonna be because what I don't want to do is put a gill pad, I don't want to put a scale pattern on the gill plate. I want all my scales back here. So um, this is a little bit of a guess, but I'm, I'm gonna start rubbing that pattern in around that gill area leaving the head smooth I'm gonna leave a, about a quarter of an inch extra and I'm gonna trim that off later after I've got it stuck on there but I want to leave myself some extra because this is kind of difficult to align perfectly. And so what you're doing is you're giving yourself a little bit of play there in case it doesn't wind up being as exactly, exactly in the right spot. Okay. All right, this is the, this is the hard part, I think. Getting it on there straight. Mm-hmm. Nope. I'm sticking it here. It's just a matter of can I get this on there? relatively wrinkle free so far so good yeah a few wrinkles are okay
Got a kind of a little stripe thing going on here. I'll put another one down the center there. kind of something interesting I don't know that it's you know mimicking any kind of real fish in particular it just adds some visual interest a little bit of detail to it So uh, I had to act pretty quickly on applying this epoxy. It was starting to set up on me because of the amount of heat in the garage plus keeping all of that epoxy in a, in a small space like a cup concentrates the heat that's generated from the epoxy and the uh, reaction. And so that causes it to set up faster um, on you. And so I, I just brushed it on really fast and it turned out pretty decently actually I was surprised uh, because it was not going well so I did have to turn off the camera to, to focus on getting this done I did have to come back and uh, pop a lot of bubbles um, again because of the heat so what I've noticed is wood wants to off gas and so if you heat that wood up too much it starts making bubbles if I can, I avoid using the hair dryer because it puts heat in the wood and it makes it off gas. Um, so I only use that as a last resort and I did have to use it on this one just because it was globbing and it wasn't spreading and I had to apply even more heat to melt it again um, so that it would flow. You know, to be 100% honest with you guys, I have no idea what I'm gonna paint this side. I've been racking my brain trying to figure something out and I still do not have a plan of action. Other than, I know I need to cover these seams, so we'll start there. Next, I'm going to take a wet Q-tip and I'm just going to kind of clean up around some of these areas. On a paper towel, just down that center line because I want to keep it real shiny. All right, and then we're going to do some pearl white along the belly like uh, we always do. There's some areas that I'm trying to build up a little bit more uh, than others. And when I do that, the paint tends to pile up. So you need to dry it pretty frequently and, and build it up in layers rather than try and just hose it all at once or it'll glob and run and you don't want that. The foil has some creases in it along this taper uh, at the top and the bottom. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more of this um, pearl white and try and cover some of that uh, and give it a nice white belly. All right, so I don't have it 100% mapped out, but I know I want it to be something salt water. Uh, so I think I'll do something kind of kind of like a tuna, kind of tuna like. I'm going to do a yellow stripe, transparent, transparent yellow. Fade it up and then I'll probably go into like a blue. Next, I'm going to fade a Wicked Laguna Blue over that, which will kind of come off a little bit green and that's, that's fine. We're looking at yellows, greens, blues. It's kind of the, kind of the range we're going in. getting there all right so in order to paint the fins I need to make myself a little cutout I got myself a piece of paper and I've run the dryer on that so it should be should be safe Exacto. I am going to put four grams of part A, but uh, three grams of part B. Something new that y'all haven't seen, uh, although I have been using it, is this uh, mixer. It's called uh, Pacific Bay. It's actually for making rods, for uh, clear coating rods. And uh, what it does is it acts like a little mini concrete mixer here. You put your epoxy in there and then you turn it on and it just rotates. And then there's this uh, mixer that goes in there. Set that in there and it just sort of rolls and it mixes it all up without putting a bunch of bubbles and stuff in it. Let me get a closer look for you. So it does a good job of, of mixing this uh, epoxy for you. And you can see the epoxy's starting to turn a little bit cloudy and that's what it's supposed to do. As you mix it, it'll turn cloudy and then it will turn clear again. And when it's clear again, you can apply it. Now this particular coat's supposed to just be a really thin coat. It's just a protective layer because we're going to do some more details over it. And then we'll clear coat it again. So this, this lure at the end of the day will get three uh, clear coats on it.
epoxy has cured and I've gone on ahead and taped off the bone fish side again and uh, I'm going to put a mesh over it. I'm going to try a little bit different mesh. I've got this, uh, I got a couple of pieces of this. This is off of a package of oranges I got actually. Uh, so it's kind of a plastic and I think that'll do well holding tight to the lure and, and keeping uh, paint from bleeding over. Part of the problem with um, the wire, the aluminum wire, is that on these tapers, it doesn't conform as easily as it does over some of these larger areas. So um, I'm hoping that this will be a little bit more flexible and uh, work out a little bit better. All right, now that I've got it pinned on there, I'm going to kind of use my thumb here to get it stretched to where it looks right. So uh, I'm going to paint a little bit of iridescent green over that. a subtle it's kind of a subtle detail all right uh, and now I'm going to try and line that up which is difficult I'm gonna line up that pattern and then I'm just gonna paint just this not bad not bad. I'm going to use this 15 millimeter real eye. I'm try and get a little bit of super glue in there. I was sort of sitting back and looking at it from a distance and um, I realized that this blue fin kind of stands out a little too much. So what I'm going to do is I've loaded some of this uh, iridescent green back in the brush after I cleaned it and everything. But I'm going to just do a little touch of green on the end here so that it makes sense with the rest of the lure. Mm, maybe a little more, a little more. Ooh, maybe right there. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And it ties it back to this uh, iridescent on the back here. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put one last clear coat over the whole thing and then I will roll in some pictures of the final product. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Thanks again everyone for watching and I'll see you on the next one.